Biotechnology. Life with us. Did you ever imagine a relationship between research with the zebrafish and humans recovering from heart failure? Do you know how useful some bacteria are to break down crude oil in oil spills? The answer leads to biotechnology. Biotechnology deals with living organisms and the benefits of modifying them for human purposes. Nowadays, there is a wide range of applications. For example, Laura is a 16-year-old diabetic girl. Her pancreas cannot produce the amount of insulin that her cells need to transform the food she takes into energy. She needs to inject herself from three to four times daily with synthetic insulin produced with genetically modified bacteria. The process to obtain the insulin is similar to the one used to produce the growth hormone or penicillin. But how is it possible to manipulate an organism to do what we need? The cell is the basic unit of life. Researchers are still analysing what cells do and how, and biotechnologists use this information to manipulate organisms and to develop new products. But biotechnology is not new. It was already used thousands of years ago. Humans learnt that metabolic abilities of small bacteria and fungi could be useful for food production. Wine, beer, yogurts, cheese or yeast rising bread you may consume regularly are the result of biotechnologies that require the use of microorganisms. The possibility of modifying microorganisms to produce new drugs started in 1953 when James Watson and Francis Crick described the structure of the DNA molecule, the Book of Life. Since then, and thanks to the work of many researchers, it has become possible to modify the genetics of organisms in order to obtain new ones with new functions. Moving aside from genetics, understanding the molecular biology of life has allowed scientists to better understand disease in a way that has clarified how many mechanistic aspects of a living cell, tissue or organ work. These findings have allowed us to interfere with the process. For example, scientists can use biological tools such as antibodies. These are very specific proteins naturally used to fight infections that can act almost as magic bullets by recognising the target only. Antibodies have been routinely produced in the lab since 1976 and are now a therapeutic reality to fight chronic leukaemia and other diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis. And we can go further. Now scientists understand how cells differentiate to become specialised cells or a tissue or an organ. For example, we can use stem cells from fat which can differentiate into different kinds of cells as therapeutic agents to regenerate cartilage or burn skin after an accident. Or we could try to imitate nature. For example, the zebrafish, an amazing creature that can repair its heart cells if they are harmed. If we find the genetic clues, someday we might imitate them and regenerate an infarcted human heart or even other illnesses that today have no cure. <laughs>